So hi everyone, and uh, to give you a bit of context, like about K what Chaos is, like uh, my name is Natalia. I'm CEO here at Chaos, and uh, we are a prop tech company in data analytics. Uh, we are forecasting cities, uh, and I'll go through a very quick uh, presentation today. Uh, but I'll also focus more in in the in the demo overall. So uh, to give you a bit of a uh, context here, like uh, we have been, uh, we are in Helsinki, we are in Maria01, if everybody uh, knows that or you're familiar with that, the startup hub, uh, and we have been featured like in, in different places. We also participated in Slush, so we got very good uh, results from there. Uh, and currently we're working uh, with uh, international customers like in the real estate industry, uh, focusing investment or uh, building development. Um, so very, very known brands, uh, if you're familiar with them. Uh, and our team is uh, around uh, 10 people right now. So very, very, very nice traction so far where we have had and uh, very nice pricing as well. Uh, I, I have to say that we are committed to uh, sustainability. So we won an award uh, from the UN Sustainable Development Goals as well in 2019. Uh, and the reason for this is that we are focusing a lot in understanding uh, the end customer over customers, that being the citizen, the resident, or the tenant. Uh, and, and of course, like uh, our vision here is to make more livable uh, places for everyone or a livable world. Uh, and <clears throat> we are focused uh, in, in data analytics as we see that the real estate industry is changing. Uh, today, currently, uh, whenever someone wants to invest, uh, uh, either buying a plot of land or then building something, uh, what typically happens is that uh, our customers would have some sort of data that they would process through Excel files, for example. Uh, most of them are using Excel or Power BI. Uh, and then some of them are using GIS, which is like the spatial, like uh, maps and understanding where things are, for example, uh, where um, some uh, infrastructure is located or parks or so on. But still, uh, we see that uh, PropTech is affecting uh, how we do analytics. Uh, and, and we see like a, a change, uh, for example, from just like understanding what the market price is, like overall to invest, to really going deep down into what a location has. And, and, and nowadays, like understanding how can I improve that location? How can I make it more attractive so I get the best return of investment? So. So we're living in a different era right now, and, and we see that uh, our customers are defining much better uh, strategies so they can um, enhance the way that they have been working as well. So we see a shift from a um, real estate industry that was very conservative into a more uh, data-driven and insight-driven uh, industry. So, so that's what uh, we're working with. Um, and of course, uh, what happens to, to all these like new adopters, like uh, um, real estate investment companies that are adopting all these new technology? Uh, we see that they're getting a higher return of investment. Uh, they're minimizing the risk when investing somewhere as they have much more uh, understanding of the locations. And of course, they're doing much better forecasting. So uh, when they're understanding like uh, how much or uh, 10 years ahead, like uh, what kind of things do I have to develop for what kind of population, then uh, they're understanding better the needs overall of locations, but also of their own customers. So basically, uh, the data analytics that we produce like at Chaos uh, help our customer through the different development phases. Um, and, and that this could be from land banking or uh, land development up until property redevelopment. So where you, when you are divesting and then investing in another asset again. So uh, we, we help our customers with the market analysis that has to be done in each phase, like to, to take a decision. And very concretely, a market analysis is focused in three things. One is the demographic demand. Uh, it's like how much, uh, um, or and what kind of tenants and customers am I expecting in five years, 10 years from now? And who is going to move where? So what kind of like a uh, population am I going to have? Uh, and then the second one is um, what, what are the characteristics of these end user? Do, do they prefer green spaces? Uh, are they young students that uh, don't want to form a family yet? 
or are these like elderly groups that want to live in a community? So understanding really what these uh, end users uh, like and their preferences and what makes them feel at home, it's very important. Uh, and the third thing is like the market supply. So what kind of buildings do I have in stock? What is the service provision there? Um, what what is uh, the the mobility options that I have? Do I have public transport? Uh, do I have parks and so on? So matching all of these together and correlating uh, what we have in a location to to really perform much better market analysis and then make forecasts like it's going to be like the key in understanding and and uh, we believe that anyone who has this information will outperform in the industry as well. So this was. Uh, what I wanted to show about us, uh, now I move to the demo. So do you see my screen? Yes? Yes, we do. <clears throat> All right, good. So now what you're seeing here is uh, some ideas of, that people collaborate. So we have a, a way to collaborate with residents uh, and they, <clears throat> our customers use our tools also to engage with them with their own residents. So if you're in property management or you're uh, performing some uh, early analysis on what is the feedback from, from the location, then you can use these tools. So, so there's uh, you can use it right away. You can download it uh, from uh, different uh, uh, stores uh, and then you can like use it, but if you're a resident. But what I'm gonna show you today, it's like uh, the most valuable thing that we have here. And I will show you like how to look uh, for indicators uh, regarding a location. Um, <clears throat> so when a customer is like logging into our tool, they they are looking to answer like uh, three questions. So it's like uh, where to invest, either to buy land or then to build, when to do it, like at what point of time do I get the best uh, return of investment, and then what should I build? So in order to answer these questions, they 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 move make a they search uh, our tool. Um, I would type here Helsinki so you know how I go and select uh, like different spaces in Helsinki. So, so we have the city of Helsinki here. You can say, select other cities as well uh, and more even. But I'm just selecting like, for example, those plots that I'm interested in, for example. And then let's say that I have, I'm interested in the postal codes here in Helsinki in this one. So let's see and show forecast. If you're an international investor, of course, like you can also go ahead and use this tool and, and check those uh, areas like in, in other countries and then like uh, uh, understand uh, how the market is also performing there. Typically consultancies uh, do this, uh, but they have like local uh, experts like understanding the market. But with our tool, you can also go ahead uh, and understand these. So, uh, just one second, this popped up, okay. So now in here, we are checking uh, the demographics. So basically I need to understand like how, uh, what kind of demographics do I have in the area? And in here you can see the trend uh, from 2013, 2017 and so on, and the breakdown of like the groups and in which groups are, are growing or going down. If I go into a postal code, I can also see like the breakdown uh, of these like demographics and then also the trends. Uh, I have here also like another graph that shows me like how the trend is behaving. Uh, in here, I'm not sure if you see it well, uh, I have a bar and I have different years. So if you move along the bar, you can also see the transformation of the demographics through the years as well. Uh, one nice thing about this is that when I'm uh, studying like my market, uh, I also want to understand how that compares to the city level because, of course, there's no absolute uh, numbers. So, of course, you're, it's always a relationship uh, between what you, what the whole city offers, and then, of course, what the area has. So, in here, if I go with my mouse and search like uh, this profile, I can see like uh, the city average versus the selected area. So, I can see that households uh, without children, in average, uh, there's 55% in the city. Uh, but in the selected area, there's 64%. So it tells me somehow that the city center of Helsinki has 64% uh, uh, more like apartments without families 
means that maybe families are moving uh, in the outskirts as well of the city. Uh, if I want to limit this profile, I always have like the option to filter this and then check like a, let's see if this, yeah, check like the relationship between both of them. And here is like the education. So I'm comparing the city average, which is 38% versus the selected area, 45%. So I can also understand that uh, this is a much more uh, higher level of education area. I would also show something very interesting here. Uh, we are um, always looking into trends. So in here you see the income level or the average income of the area. Uh, one very nice thing is that you can see, for example, that the areas at the south have higher income and then lower income in here, or uh, not lower, but lower than this one. But if I see in the income trend, then I start really seeing that some areas are going down and up. And, and this, for example, it's a new area in Helsinki. So it's gaining actually uh, demographics that have high purchasing power. And this is very, very young uh, um, postal code as well. Um, a lot of uh, millennials are moving in there, which are not owning cars. So the district was designed uh, without cars in mind so this is quite interesting it's like what are the areas that are becoming more attractive for example for our own customers <clears throat> then i go ahead and also show you like as a as an investor i'm also interested okay so i understand a bit of the demographics now but i also want to understand uh how is the area developing overall um and in here i can see that uh the area or the investment of the area is going in a way that uh most of the investments done in the area are residential, so as you can see here. Uh, so, so there's like a big uh, residential um, supply coming in for these kind of demographics. Uh, if I want to filter also this, because I want to understand those that were built uh, maybe more than 50 years ago, or then the new ones, where are the new like uh, investments? So I can again like see that some of these new investments are a bit far away from the city center. And then again, the same area that we were speaking about in here, like it's actually a new investment less than five years. So it also makes sense, like understanding that, okay, this is where the city is growing. And these are also the ones that are showing an increase of income as well. So if I want to play services, then maybe this is like a spot that I want to focus on. Mm. So this is like a, through the years, like what kind of investments are, be done, are being done in this area. Uh, and we see that, for example, uh, in 2020, uh, the residential was the highest one. It seems that uh, in 2021, there's a, like, a lot of projects that are, that are coming up uh, and most of them are public so far. So of course, this is like still ongoing. So it might be that this might change also uh, as we move through the year. Um, I go, um, yeah, so, so I will show you this as well. Uh, so much more in detail, like I can go ahead and see like what kind of construction projects are going uh, in the area. And then I can check that, uh, all right, like this seems to be um, a new uh, project completely. And there's some information about this project as well that I can consult also uh, from the public registry. Uh, then, of course, we are interested in like how the people are moving overall. So uh, how, how really people like are moving. So, so for this, we took uh, here, I don't know how many minutes I'm having now, but I go fast. Uh, so in here, I can see that, um, for example, what kind of uh, footfall uh, the area has. And by footfall, we understand the people that pass a point. However, we are... Um, <clears throat> doing this like uh, in a much better or processed way. So uh, by understanding footfall and how much uh, time people like uh, really have to dwell in a place, we can take certain assumptions. For example, in here, as you can see, the majority of the, the activity hubs where people really like are moving uh, are close to the city center and then also close to the mobility spots as well. Uh, if I start, to increase this threshold, uh, then I'm left that the city center is the one that has more activity. 
But as I decrease that, then of course, like I see other hubs already forming in other parts of the city. Uh, so let's go ahead and click one spot. Uh, and then we see, oh, maybe this one, but maybe we see a bigger change. So we can see here that um, like uh, the activity, the daily activity that this spot has like uh, during the week, but also like what happens during the weekdays because it's very different uh, how people utilize this uh, during the weekdays. And very one very nice thing also that I like about this is that uh, in here we can uh, combine these by uh, and understand what kind of hubs these are like. Uh, are these transit hubs, hangouts, or residential or working offices? So we understand uh, through the data if we can call this a transit hub, like really where people are just like walking fast uh, uh, by it. Uh, or then are they hanging out like maybe around between two hours, uh, one or five hours? So then, then we make another assumption in there. One interesting thing about this is that this uh, green square that you see here, it's the railway station of Helsinki. And there was like a study or a research going on in Aalto University and someone was asking like, uh, that, uh, can we understand if the railway station is actually a place for dwelling or a place for commuting? And through this kind of data, we can take assumptions and say, well, it seems that it's more for dwelling. So the railway station, if you all know it, it's quite beautiful. It's uh, in the heart of uh, Helsinki. Uh, and it's like an architectural jewel. So I can also understand that a lot of people hang out there. So this is also interesting to know. Uh, then I go quickly for some last thing that I want to show you here. I'm just careful that I'm not running out of time. Uh, and here we are condensing the services of an area. And it's very important to understand the provision of services. So of course, like uh, is a, is a uh, area well serviced or not? And we have taken like uh, databases uh, from the world and then combined them together in this filtering mode. So let me see, I go in. So if I go in, I can start seeing like that, that I have like exact points of where the services are located. And as I go out, then I have like this uh, breakdown. Uh, we have done for you or for our customers, like uh, the filtering between processes, for example, like uh, between services, uh, are these necessary or optional? and then how many of those you have. So then uh, our customers can filter in here and then just can go a bit down and then understand what is the relationship, for example, between sports and civic in here. So it's quite nice. And uh, <clears throat> so lastly, I want to under, uh, just show you what happens when you relate demographics and services, for example. So then you can benchmark areas and actually grade them based on uh, how convenient they are for the residents. So here we take a general profile, an average profile of, of a customer or a resident. And then we match the services that the area has. Uh, and we take into account and see that uh, they are missing some services. For example, if we take in this area, the blue squares tells us that we are missing 11% of public spaces. So if we would increase this by 11%, that living convenience would raise for the residents living in this area. So these are the nice things that you can get like uh, when when you do actually like a uh, um, correlation of different data sets and then understanding trends and forecasts is like, how is the area uh, like provision overall? What is the demand? And then how can I correct that in order to understand what to build there in the future? Uh, I think I'm running out of time, so I, I will stop here. <laughs>